Okay guys, so I wanted to do a video on uh, buying used cars. Um, there is no guarantees when you buy a used car. Hell, there's no guarantees when you buy a new car. Um, you get a brand new car and it can have problems right off the lot. You know, I mean, it, it, there, there's no guarantees in life anywhere. But, um, if you want to get a used car that should last and should be a good vehicle, um, there are some things to look for. Obviously, how well it's cared for. Um, that's an important thing. But, um, whenever I buy a used car, I try and get first or second owner. Um, a car without history is not a real good thing. Um, I watch this show, uh, it's about repossessing airplanes. And if you don't have the documents, the service documents on the plane, the plane's value drops in half. And I'm just kind of thinking that should apply to vehicles too. Um, I won't typically buy a vehicle unless I can see all the documentation on it and possess it. Because if I can't pass it on to the next guy, who's to say what's been taken care of and what hasn't? So um, that's also a tip when you have your own car, save all your records, put them in a file folder and keep them so that when you go to sell the car, you can get a little bit more for them by showing that you've taken care of it. Um, this car was bought by uh, uh, a guy, uh, He, you know, he's a business owner. He bought this car, took care of it, sold it to his son, and I bought it from his son. So technically it's a second owner, but essentially it's a one owner because it was the same family, the same people owned it. Um, and you know, I bought this thing at 245,000 miles, and now it hit 330 before it was finally totaled. Um, and I'll also say with the third gen 4Runner, it did a pretty good job as far as uh, protecting the occupants inside. Um, this was hit by a full size truck. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, I'm sure there are safer vehicles out there, but this wasn't, you know, it, it held up pretty good. Um, and this is a light vehicle and, and all that. Um, so, anyway, when you're buying a, a used vehicle, you want to look for service records. You want to look for one and two owners. Um, you want to look for a history on it. Was it a car with a lot of problems? Um, what kinds of things were fixed? Uh, if you've had, you know, a vehicle that's had the head gaskets replaced twice, then you know the owner probably liked overheating his car. <laughs> so, there are these little things you can figure out when buying a car. Um, Mileage to me doesn't it does matter, but it doesn't matter as much um, When I replaced my Tundra I ended up getting this uh, Titan and uh, it's got a gob of miles on it um, You know, it's a pretty good little vehicle um, It's it that's a whole other video though on that one <laughs> but uh, But that was also from a one owner kind of the same situation um, if you're buying something from a dealer then like I had to do with this because of that to go back into car debt which I haven't been in a while um, with this I was able to see from the Carfax what kind of service history it had um, the Carfax told me um, everything that was done at the dealer which uh, looks like this guy had everything done from the dealer which is a nice thing um, and you know there were a lot of other uh, this is a Camry hybrid and um, there were a lot of others available um, and others that were cheaper but this one had a real good history on it um, just under 100,000 miles on it um, I'm not afraid of mileage obvious for obvious reasons I got 330 out of this one um, this one it's the first vehicle I've ever had with the warranty still in place <laughs> but uh, it's got 150,000 miles on the battery because it is a hybrid kind of cool anyway um, sorry I'm being really dorky in this video sorry about that but essentially um, Aside from checking all the other things, if you can have a mechanic look at it, even better. Um, most of the time people trade in a car because they're tired of it for one reason or another. Um, sometimes they just want to get something new. That's what you want to find. This guy, um, I bought this Forerunner because he was buying uh, something else. He just, I mean, he couldn't keep all the vehicles, you know what I mean? Kind of the same situation with that truck. The car, I have no idea. No idea why he turned it in, because I bought it from a dealer. I didn't get to meet the original owner. I didn't get to talk to him, get a feel for, is he a car guy? Does he take care of his stuff? Or does he just mm, not think about it? This guy and that guy, I knew they really took care of it. So that's why I got him. So that's kind of, you know, it's almost like you're looking at the story. One other piece of advice I'd have is any car that you're looking at, look up this specific year, specific model. 
um, and find out what their reviews are on it. Go to forums like um, yodatech.com was a great source for researching these cars. I could find out what they're all about, kind of get a feel for the car before I ever got into it. Um, it's one of the reasons I did get into it because people were so happy with them. So um, that's what I would say is really just kind of get in there and review these things. And by watching this, you're, you're getting the right idea. Um, really looking into it and finding out, okay, what's good, what's bad. You know, um, there are some things that would make seem to make perfect sense, but they're not as good. Um, for example, certain years of Toyotas have a problem with sludge. Um, people don't change their oil, you can get sludge buildup, and you could be going through a drive through and have your motor just give out on you because of the sludge issue. So there are certain things that are more prone to that. Um, you know, just because it's a particular brand doesn't mean it's a, a 300 to 400,000 mile vehicle. Um, it, every car maker makes a pile of crap at one point or another. Some lesser, some more. Um, you got to find out, okay, is the car I'm looking at, it, was that this automaker's pile of crap? <laughs> or was it an amazing piece of technology that they did really well with? This is an example of something they did really, really well with. I just got this thing. I'm going to venture to say this is the same thing here. But, um, so that's the thing. Do your research. Really check it out. I mean, if you do it right, you can end up buying a vehicle for free. And what I mean by that is if you buy it at the bottom of its depreciation, because everything depreciates. You buy it off the lot, it depreciates. This thing, uh, what I bought it for and what I got for the check was about what I spent on the thing altogether with things I added to it and whatnot. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I ended up not really losing much money on this car. You're going to lose money on a car most of the time. Sometimes you'll get lucky. I've done it quite a few times where I've bought a car, drove it around, didn't really like it, sold it, and sold it for more money than what I got it for. Um, that's kind of rare. What you really want to buy it for is long term, but you do want to buy it for resale. Am I buying a vehicle to keep it forever, or am I being realistic and knowing I'm going to end up buying this or selling this thing? Will I be able to sell it for as much when that time comes? With a foreigner, a third gen, at this point, I would say you could probably buy a foreigner for free. If you buy it for, you know, say $4,000, $5,000, drive it around for five, six years, and you go to sell it, it may still be worth that if you've taken care of it. Um, you know, so you're going to have maintenance costs and stuff like that in there, but generally, uh, you can do pretty well if you buy the right car. Um, other cars you buy for five thousand dollars in five years, it's worth fifteen hundred bucks. I don't think it's going to happen with these. These are well known; they're they're sought after. So, anyway, that's just kind of my advice on used car buying. You know that anything with wheels is going to give you problems. You're going to have to fix it at some point. It's how often and how expensive those things are going to be that really determines whether you bought a good car or not. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and uh, please subscribe.